Hello and welcome to History Blast, to our Cold War series. Today we're going to be focusing on the arms race between the USA and the USSR as Cold War tensions rise. Between the years 1945 and 1991, the USA and the USSR built more than 100,000 nuclear weapons. This was an arms race unlike any that had ever been seen before, with both sides trying to best the other by producing larger amounts of more powerful weapons. The arms race officially began on the 16th of July 1945, back before the Potsdam Conference had begun, when the USA launched its Trinity project. The USA exploded its massive Trinity bomb at a nuclear test site in New Mexico. This was the first ever atomic bomb test in history and yielded 19 kilotons of energy, the equivalent of 19,000 tons of TNT, making a crater over 300 meters wide. The result of this test meant that an atomic bomb using plutonium could be ready for use by the US military in the war. When President Harry S. Truman first arrived at Potsdam, it was then that Stalin was first briefed about this new nuclear weapon. Truman hoped that nuclear power would give him the edge at negotiations with Stalin, but it only served to drive a wedge further between them. And it was then, only three weeks later, that the USA would actually use this awesome weapon twice, against Japan. On the 6th of August, the US dropped the uranium-powered little boy on the city of Hiroshima. It exploded with an energy of 15 kilotons of TNT and caused widespread death and destruction throughout the city, claiming at least 140,000 lives. This was then followed on the 9th of August by dropping another nuclear bomb, this time on the city of Nagasaki. The result was the complete surrender of Japan less than a week later. And these two explosions against Japan had huge consequences for the relationship between the East and the West. These nuclear weapons had the opposite effect on Stalin. Instead of bringing him to heel, they made him feel like the USA was trying to intimidate him. And this got his back up. His policies towards Eastern Europe became more determined and his immediate aim now focused on recruiting more countries to communism and tightening his grip on Eastern Europe, which was providing a buffer between him and the West. And of course, Stalin became more determined than ever to get his hands on these nuclear weapons himself. So now we're going to consider how the arms race actually developed and what steps were taken by both countries competing against each other. Between 1945 and 1949, Stalin sent his scientists and spies into overdrive. A German-born physicist called Klaus Fuchs had helped the Americans build their first atomic bombs and was now smuggling the plans to Fat Man to the Soviets. On the 29th of August 1949, the USSR tested its first atomic bomb, called First Lightning. The Soviets had erected buildings and even put animals in cages nearby to test the effects. At 20 kilotons, the bomb's power was similar to that of the US Trinity test, and of course, decimated the buildings and incinerated the animals. Truman himself didn't find out about the bomb test that the Russians were doing until US spy planes had picked up radiation signals, and this sent shockwaves through the USA. US analysts hadn't expected the Russians to have nuclear energy until the 1950s. So now the race was on to go one better. Feeling the threat, the US had to create an even stronger weapon, and this would be the hydrogen bomb. In November 1952, the US exploded its first hydrogen bomb, the first in thermonuclear weapons. It was 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bombs used in Japan, restoring the advantage in the arms race to the US. However, the following year in August 1953, the Soviets exploded their own hydrogen bomb. And the competition continued. In March 1954, in the Pacific Ocean, the US tested Castle Bravo, the largest nuclear bomb the US had ever tested. It was 14.8 megatons, the equivalent of 14 million tons of TNT. The radiation was so powerful and spread so wide that it affected Japanese islands nearby, and since then has featured in many Godzilla stories. This new superweapon gave superiority to the USA over the Soviets for the rest of the 1950s. But something even more deadly and new was being developed, and this would become the ICBM, or the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Because it wasn't enough to be able to drop an atomic bomb from a plane, what if you could launch it from anywhere in the world? These new ICBMs would allow nuclear warheads to be fired at targets more than 4,000 kilometers away, rather than having to drop it from a plane above the target. And in June 1957, the USA were the first to develop this new ICBM. 
But again, the USSR was right on America's heels, and it wasn't long before they had their own ICBMs. In August of 1957, the same year the USA developed their ICBM, the Russians then tested their own. Of course, something was still bugging the USSR leader, Nikita Khrushchev. It was the USA that had the biggest bomb, the Castle Bravo. Khrushchev now wanted to double the results of the Castle Bravo test. So, in October 1961, the Russians did just that. They exploded the Tsar bomb, 50 megatons of energy. The mushroom cloud was 65 kilometers high, seven times the size of Mount Everest. Even to this day, it is the largest nuclear weapon ever exploded in the world. For the first time, the Soviets had outdone the Americans. So with hydrogen bombs and ICBMs and all the development of these weapons stepping up at a faster pace, it was pretty obvious that the technology now existed to end the world. And so a new theory came about, and this was called MAD. MAD stands for Mutually Assured Destruction. This means that both sides knew that if one attacked the other, they could reply with equally devastating force, meaning that everyone would be destroyed. So now there was a switch in mentality. Nuclear weapons were no longer going to be used to wage war, instead they would be used to prevent one, for fear of destroying the entire world. And at the time, the fear of nuclear destruction became even more real. Throughout the 1950s, anti-nuclear protests began to rage across the world as people's anger grew over the increased weapons building. Videos like Duck and Cover, produced in 1952, gave advice to US school children about the dangers and realities of potential nuclear warfare. The arms race itself would continue into the 70s and the 80s, as well as discussions to try and reduce the number of weapons being produced by both sides. And the arms race itself would not really end until the final dissolution of the USSR on the 25th of December 1991, which signaled the end of the arms race and the end of the Cold War.